Good day, friends. So let's start on our feet. And before you get too, um, I feel like sometimes when it's like, and do mountain pose, suddenly it's like, dunk, 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 this checklist, and we're like, we're in. So before you go through that checklist, I want you to just pause and just notice how you're standing. And if you weren't on a yoga mat doing a yoga class, right, what would be your tendency? And although I'm kind of in Tadasana, I'm already moving towards my tendency. My, if I was my own druthers, I often find myself with my right knee bent. I don't think about this. I just do it, right? My left hip is sticking out. My right hip's a little bit back because of that posture in the pelvis. My spine kind of follows lead, right? And so this is where I tend to spend a lot of my time um, when I have to do standing. So even though I'm not in the full position, when I do Tadasana without much thought, right, to it, and I'm just kind of standing, um, I still have more weight in my left foot, my left hip sticking out, my right knee, right pelvis is a little bit further back. And that's part of the reason why I hyperextend my right knee so badly, right, is because I have that hip back and that knee whoops back. Do you have that much knowledge in your body? Maybe not, maybe not at this point in time, we start to gain it as we do this work more and more and observe, but just notice your tendency, yeah? And then taking the first week of this year, we're gonna pay attention to the feet. So go ahead and pull your toe pedals up, right? And as you pull your toe pedals up, feel the arches lifting, right? Feel the weight distribute between those three corners, the tripods, set the toes back down, trying to maintain the footwork. And just notice if that changed anything above, right? For me, I still have to ask a little more weight to come into the right foot, but it tends to get my pelvis a little more neutral and stabilized so the spine can grow up out of that. So keeping that as much as you can as we move through these half salutations, right? Inhale, nice and gentle. We're just starting to move the body, exhale. And that's no matter where you are in your day, right? Hands on shins, reaching the chest forward. Take the time to really come into the body. Exhale, folding in. Inhale, don't let those hips shoot back as you come all the way up. Let's bring our hands together if it's okay today and bring our hands down to our heart and pause and take a breath there. Notice if anything has shifted for you thus far, right? But also... Feel the weight distribute evenly in the feet. And let's go again. Inhale. Maybe palms touch. Maybe you gaze up. Exhale. Don't let those hips shoot back. That's been the past two weeks worth of work. Inhale. Lengthening the spine. Toning the abdomen. Exhale. Folding in. And inhale. Coming all the way up. Remember, you could always do hands on hips. Exhale, let's bring our hands to our heart, wherever you just were, take a full breath. Notice where you're at. Okay, interlace your hands behind your back. Push uh, with a little bit of bent elbow, by the way. Go ahead and push into the sacrum like you're literally pushing the tailbone forward. I'm not gonna thrust my hips forward, right? But I'm gonna let that tailbone kind of move into my body. That's gonna help me move out of what we're often in here, which is an anterior tilt, right? In the pelvis. Move those elbows together behind you like they could actually touch. And don't get aggressive with that, right? Just a nice gentle movement in as if they could kiss and say hello. And then go ahead and bend your knees quite a bit as you fold forward. Now, when you get into that fold, maybe those knuckles start to reach up off of the low back. For some of us, we can barely reach them off of the low back. You could leave them on your sacrum the whole time. For some of us, we start to reach the knuckles up to the sky, still letting those elbows gently move towards each other, right? So it's not as active here, but still that element. And soft neck, head drapes. Reach the knuckles back to bring your body up. Release the arms forward. So I'm gonna to turn towards you, but you can stay forward. So moving into a little bit of a twisting action and just starting to move our upper body. You're gonna take the right arm and roll it open, right? So I think of it as doing the backstroke. If you've already done two sets, slow down a little bit. Let it be about your range of motion, right? And really sense what that is. Maybe one side feels very differently than the other. You can turn your head. You can bend the knees to keep the knees soft if it feels like they're taking the brunt of this. 
And now we're gonna go the other way. So now bring your right arm back first and bring it all the way around in front like you're doing the front stroke. So I'm working, I'm talking about the arms, but obviously our torso is twisting with that, right? So again, I like to micro bend my knees. I have a tendency to hyperextend, <laughs> right? So this just helps me keep it out of my knees and let my body just do a nice gentle uh, rotation. And bring the arms down by the side. Now I'm gonna step my feet just a little bit wider, but I'm gonna keep that footwork and keep myself stable and just swing into it now, right? Without the rotation of the shoulders, let yourself move into a slightly deeper twist potentially. You know, I would say if you get really dizzy or have motion sickness, you just keep your eyeballs forward and let it be the lower body. Still great work for the neck, but you can turn and look the same way. I'm going to stay a little forward today because I'm a little sensitive to motion, I'm discovering. <laughs> and then go ahead and come on back to center, which, by the way, if any of my friends are in perimenopause, um, I've discovered through other folks and myself included because I was having uh, motion sickness come up again. And I haven't really had it since my youth and like car trips only a few times. But um, I've had a number of women tell me, oh, yeah, 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 that's your hormonal imbalance, right? Like almost like a morning sickness kind of situation. It's like, Bleh. yeah. So from there, keeping the feet kind of wide, you're gonna go ahead and you're just gonna switch the arms, right? So now my torso stays pretty still. I let my arms be pretty loosey-goosey and I'm just letting them swing and sway one arm on top and then the other, starting to open up that upper back, maybe the chest. And as always, when we move in this fashion, we get to move that lymphatic fluid. And then you're going to go ahead, if it's okay, I'm going to come back into hip distance. You're going to either reach up, right, and just soften in. If it's okay, I'm going to swing in. And that's what I'm going to show now. And I'm going to add an exhale. Inhale is up. Exhale. All through the nose. So don't go as fast. If it feels like it's not okay for your joints or anything or your low back, keep that belly toned in. That's part of the reason we're adding that active, um, assertive exhale right, to tone in our corset, to keep our low back protected. Keep your arms up this time, shake your hands. If it's okay to shake the body, shake any part of your body. Okay, bring those arms down. Standing at the top of the mat again, if you moved at all. Inhale, we're gonna move into some lunges. Exhale. Inhale, step your left foot back, bring the knee down. We're gonna move the hips a little bit forward on the inhale, right? And move them back and maybe flex the right foot on the exhale. One more of those, inhale forward. Just moving those hippies now, exhale back. Coming forward, we're gonna walk our right foot out wide, both hands inside. And if it's okay with your body, circle the hips. And just a reminder, that left knee can be lifted. Toes curled under left knee lifted if this hurts the knee at all. Go ahead and go the other way, or you could pad the knee. Just saying good morning. Well, good morning, good day, hips. <laughs> Walk that foot in. Let's do a slightly bigger twist. Left hand under left shoulder, right hand on the thigh. Twist in, right? Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. And then we're going to do a little movement with the upper arm. So you're going to look down as you inhale the arm into extension, right? Bicep next to earish. And then exhale, come back to goal post arm and maybe turn the head and look up. Inhale, look down. Exhale, go post arm. One more time. Inhale and exhale with your goal post arm. Maybe turn and look up and then bring that right arm down. Step back to downward facing dog. And just take a second here. Calibrate. For me, that always means bending the knees a little bit so I can find the length of the spine, paying attention to the rotation of my upper arm bone. There's so many things I could point out, right? What do you remember? What can you do to facilitate the longest spine you could possibly get? The soft neck. And then we're gonna swing that right leg forward. You can go up first if you'd like to. Oops, I lied. Sorry, it's your left foot. My bad, my bad. Left foot forward. <laughs> Bring the right knee down or not if it feels like too much. And then I'm gonna exhale 
and come a little forward. Oh, sorry, on the inhale. And then exhale back, maybe flexing the left foot. <sighs> That's slow brain day. <laughs> and inhale. And exhale. Come forward. Right hand under right shoulder, left hand on the thigh. Inhale and get long. Exhale and twist. And here we are. And adding possible arm. You can just reach up, leave the hand on the thigh, or inhale, look down as you reach the arm over. I'm not rolling my ribs down with that, okay? Exhale, arm in a goal post arm, maybe turning and looking up. Inhale, lengthen. Extend, I should say. Exhale, goal post. Pause there. Bring the hand down. Step forward to the top of your mat. Inhale, forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up, not letting those hips kick back behind you. Exhale, hands to the heart, one full breath cycle. Inhale, all through the nose. Exhale, one more. Inhale, reach those arms out and up, not one more um, breath, sorry, one more uh, <laughs> lunge series. Exhale. Inhale. Bend your knees, plant your hands, step your right foot back. This time, leave the knee up, bring the heel down, right? And from there, you can always come up on blocks. That is an option, right? Try to straighten the left leg. Maybe even put your left thumb in your hip crease. Move the left hip back as you reach the chest forward, right heel down, right? And then maybe, maybe, maybe you stay right here. Maybe you start to fold in a little bit more over that leg. So you can kind of find out where's the best place for you to work this morning. You don't have to look like me, nor should you. I'm me, you're you, <laughs> right? But we're trying to see about maybe opening up that right calf muscle, maybe feeling the left hamstrings, and then move those blocks if you're working with them. Step back and elongate your stance a little bit for your downward dog. You're, we probably had a shorter stance for that pose. Pyramid pose. Okay. I believe we need the right leg forward. And then again, you might need a slightly shorter stance than say a warrior one or a warrior two. That left heel down. I'm going to come up on blocks so that I can find my spine, right? Because if you're just rounding your spine the whole time, you're really not pulling the pelvis um, into an anterior tilt or towards an anterior tilt. And then you're not going to lengthen the muscles as much as you could, right? So lengthen the spine. I'm going to put my right thumb in my hip crease, move that hip back and in, holding it in, right? Establish the hand on the ground again, and then maybe you do fold a little deeper, and maybe you don't need to, and you're already in your stretch. And breathe. Step the left foot forward to the front of the mat. You can remove the blocks. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, coming up, Urdhva Hastasana, Intadasana, and exhale, Samastitahi, equal standing. Find the breath. Bring the arms down. And then let's go ahead and we're going to go into um, coming down to the earth through a chair. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, go ahead and sit down. Now, if you need to bring your hands down first and do shin drop, shin drop. Hopefully you're familiar with me. Uh, if you're new to me, uh, watch other videos. Pretty much every class we come down through, through chair, some kind of squat. Let your left leg extend out, your right heel come in. Inhale and get really tall. And then we're gonna turn towards the bent knee. So I activate my left leg a little bit, nothing too crazy. I turn my belly button, not my chin, right? Towards that bent knee. And I'm gonna go ahead and just fold over. I could bring blocks under my arms if I wanted to, right? Maybe forearms are on the earth. You can kind of see what works best in your body without desiring something else, right? Or someone else's body, just really loving your body and observing what's it doing today. That left hip, can it get a little heavier for this last breath? Come back up, come through center, right through the center of the thighs, the knees, inhale, exhale, fold forward. Still a little activity in that left shin. Again, you have the option of blocks under forearms, forearms on the ground, what works for you here. 
And how does this change the, the position? The legs are in the same position, right? We're just switching the upper body. But for me, there are three, because we're gonna do one more over the straight leg. There are three very distinct stretches. Come on up, turning over the straight leg, belly button, not chin, right? And folding over that leg any amount. And again, feel free to support yourself however it feels, right? Notice if that right hip came with you on the journey, can it stay towards the earth or can you soften it down? Come all the way up. We're gonna switch our legs out. This is that sensitive knee of mine, so I'm going to support it. I love you so much, knee. Keep that right leg a little active, turn towards bent leg, inhale, and exhale, go ahead and fold over the leg and come into whatever supported position you would like. You feel free to use blocks on her forearms, et cetera. And I don't know about you, but my right hip came with me. So I'm gonna see if I can let that right hip move back towards where it started. And I intensify the stretch a bit in that left. For me today, it's uh, more than low back. It's more around the sacrum and outer hip, which is not always the case for me. Inhale, come back up. So I've got a different thing going on in my pelvis today. That's good to know. Turn in the middle between the thighs and the two knees. Go straight forward, keeping that little bit of activity in the right leg, softening down to whatever support system works for you, softening the chin to the chest, buttocks, bones heavy. For some of us, especially um, who have a little more flexibility, particularly, keep that low belly toned in lightly. And support your low back. Come back up, turning towards the right, gently folding over that right leg with the belly button more than the chin, right? Or just at least steering in that direction. And then again, that left hip, can you soften that left hip back towards the earth? And where do you feel it on this side in this stretch, right? When we're over the straight leg. Inhale, come all the way up. Let those legs go out in front of you. Push through the ball mounds of the big toes, particularly. There's many things I could point out, but we're still doing a little bit of that footwork to bring it with us as we move throughout the new year. And once you get onto your back, let's go ahead and bring those knees into the chest. Put your hands on your kneecaps, please. And just take a couple of circles with the knees. Let that Low back and sacrum, get a little massage. And go the other way. Come back to center. Now let your knees circle in opposite directions, right? So they move away from each other and then towards the chest together and away from the chest kind of thing. And demonstrating if it doesn't make sense, go the other way. Just saying hi to those hip joints again. And put the left foot down on the ground. Let that right foot reach up. Take the right big toe and start to circle it. You can put your hands behind your thighs. You don't have to. Go the other direction. And bring that down. Bring your left leg up and go ahead and circle through that ankle by letting the big toe draw a big circle. Go the other way. And now let both heels go up, both hands go up, keep a slight bend in elbows and knees. And then you're just going to do a really quick pulse up. You probably can't see it super well in the camera, but it's not, it's not a, a huge motion, right? And I'm just kind of like popping the heels of my hands and the heels of my feet up into imaginary walls, right? So it's a really tight little shake. And then we're going to keep doing this for 15, 14, 13, 12, try to stick with it, move as rapidly as you can. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Come on down. You can do a constructive rest pose, feet wide, knees lean in. You could do more of a traditional shavasana with the legs extended out. You could support yourself in many different ways. We won't be here for long but find a position where you feel like your body can be open, right? Where you can try to stay in stillness.
from that last movement, you might notice that your heart beat is a touch faster, maybe. Although slowing down, I imagine, you might notice that maybe your breathing got a little more rapid. So as we start to move back into that beautiful soft belly breath, the diaphragmatic breathing, that's gonna bring that heart back into its regular rhythm. And since this is a video and not a live Zoom class, anyone watching this, right, you are probably at home or traveling, but meaning you have the capacity potentially to stay here for one to five more minutes. It's one of the greatest gifts you'll give your body. But if you are on a time commitment, bring your awareness back to your breath. Feel free to wiggle, jiggle, rotate, stretch, you name it, whatever feels right for you as you come back into that beautiful physical body. And come back in just mean after stillness, right? And then make, make your way, she says a feel, make your way up to your upright posture. Now we did not start class in an upright posture, so it's not as much of a bookend as it usually is with my teaching, but still bring that quality in, right? As you settle in, just noticing if anything feels different than when you began this class. Bring your hands together in front of your heart, inhale. Exhale, bow your head in, and just taking a moment of gratitude. So much gratitude for these beautiful bodies. We don't have to force them into anything, right? It's not bigger, better, more. Hopefully we're starting to learn it's not no pain, no gain, right? It's just giving it these movements, this mobility, starting to understand it so we can honor it. Namaste. May you be well, friends.